let's start our discussion of the ice giants on Uranus. And we'll have this uh, image here, and this is a composite image of infrared images taken by the Tech Keck telescope using adaptive optics. Now, remember back to section six, we're discussing adaptive optics. What that means is that you're taking images that are being distorted through Earth's atmosphere and using these types of tools to correct the image. So with that, we get this composite image and you see Uranus and it looks like it's on its side with a ring around it. So two comments we wanna make here. Every single one of the giant planets does have a ring system. It's not just Saturn. Every single one of them has rings fly, floating around them. And the reason it's on its side is because it literally is. Uranus is tilted at like 97 degrees, or 98 degrees. It's almost pointing towards the sun. Now, I quickly sum up the, the rest of these you know, intimate details of Uranus. It's about 19 astronomical units away from the sun. has a very long orbit. Remember Kepler's laws, the further out we get, the longer time it takes for it to orbit the sun. So we're starting to get up to almost a century here. It's about four Earth masses, about 14 and a half, or it's about four times the Earth's radius, 14 Earth masses, but still not a very dense planet. And it's like, consistent with our gas giants, it is rapidly rotating. Once around this Uranus, is about 70.2 hours. Our discussion on the visitor and objects to Uranus will be pretty short. It was just Voyager 2 back in 1986, and it was just a flyby as it was going past, taking some pictures on its way out. So we'll go past that and just jump straight to the unique feature about Uranus. It's going to be its seasons. Going back to that tilt, remember, it's doing that 97 degree tilt as it orbits, which means that in the year 1986, the south pole of Uranus was pointing almost directly at the sun. And as it orbits, eventually it'll be the equator at the sun, followed by the north pole, and then repeat throughout the year. So, in terms of sunlight, because the seasons are dictated by basically the amount of radiant energy you absorb over a different area. And over the time span, let's look at the North Pole here. For about a 40-year time span, the North Pole is effectively receiving zero sunlight. And then by the time you start to reach, reach that 42-year mark, suddenly the North Pole will be illuminated. And it will keep getting more and more and more until it starts to shift down. And at the same time, the North Pole is getting a lot of light. The South Pole is getting effectively nothing which leads to these extreme seasonal changes is during a Uranus year. An interesting thing to discuss when it comes to Uranus was after it was first found through telescope observations, what astronomers do? They predict where it's going to be in the night sky. It's what we always do. And so we found this thing, we start predicting where it's going to be, and we try to calculate, hey, look at the path it's going to find, and wait a few months and see where it is. And this is what we observed. The actual orbit of Uranus was off. We had these predicted patterns, and yet when we finally looked into the night sky, we kept finding it being shifted. Shifted more from where it should be. So, I'll shift this to a questions on to you now, and ask, what could have caused the orbit of Uranus to be off from where we thought it would be. So go ahead and pause the video, come up with your answer, and come right back. And we'll find that it was the gravitational influence of another body. Now, if you are being diligent here, remember back to an earlier video in this section, we actually talked about this. It's Neptune. It's another planet out there. But I do think it's worthwhile to mention how ideas like, hey, we didn't know the mass of Uranus that well. Or this concept of solar winds pushing Uranus outwards. Later in these sections, we're going to talk about how hot Jupiters could have been something of planets migrating inwards. And this last one, the orbit of Uranus is not in that ecliptic plane. This is actually a problem that will apply to Pluto, and part of the reason that Pluto lost its status as a planet very recently. So, 
tying things back together in our discussion of Uranus and now on to Neptune. It turns out that people had managed to find Uranus by looking out in the telescopes. And they noticed that where it was, was shifted. The language I used earlier was perturbed. There are perturbations pulling Uranus back from where it should be. So with that information, mathematical astronomers were able to say, hey, there must be another gravitational body out there, some additional planet that's creating this gravitational tug stretching out the, the predicted pattern into the actual pattern of Uranus's orbit. So with that discovery, these, math these mathematical astronomers were able to say, hey, there is this planet out there, and let's talk about it now, Neptune. The last of the giant planets we'll talk about will be Neptune, and also the smallest one, just a little bit smaller than Uranus. Still very massive, about 17 Earth masses. It is 30 astronomical units away, and once again from Kepler's law, it's going to have the longest orbital period around the sun, the longest sidereal period of basically 165 years to go once around. Still on theme, this, the ice giant Neptune is rapidly rotating once around in 16 hours and still a relatively low density. Now for the pictures here, I love this. This is a picture of Voyager 2 of a flyby in 1989. And this was one of the last images that Voyager 2 took when it was flying by a planet. This was one of the first images Voyager 2 took of Neptune on its way out as it flew by. It was about 57 million kilometers away. And just like Uranus, only one visitor and a flyby mission. Now, unlike the gas giants, you're going to have these weak banding patterns on Uranus and Neptune. And this picture we have here is one of the transient dark spots on Neptune. So yes, there are going to be storms there, but in terms of the banding patterns, they are present on the ice giants, but not as prominent as they are versus their gas giant counterparts. But we do see cloud layers, where we'll talk about in a later video, what kind of clouds, what kind of Ices are actually what we'll talk about clouds of ice in these planetary atmospheres.